Hi guys, uh, today in this bonus video for the oldest system on the planet, we're going to be going over the Handicapper's Track Talk. Uh, this is just a simple guide that might help you understand some of the terms in horse racing, some of the jargon and lingo that you might not understand. I know growing up with Dad, uh, there's a lot of times he would say things I had no idea what he was talking about, and uh, it's taken a long time for me to figure out what most of this stuff means. So uh, hopefully this video will help. Um, if you already know a lot of this stuff, and like I said, some of it's very basic, uh, just skip on ahead. If not, uh, this could be helpful to you so that you'll know what people are talking about. So let's get started. We're going to start out with the wagering basics. Uh, obviously, the one thing you want is a win, and that's going to be the first place horse in every race. The second place horse, called a place, uh, is just what it says. It's the second place horse in the race. And the third horse is the show horse. This is the horse that run third place in the race. Now any horses that finish behind the show horse are considered an also ran, which means they also ran out of the money. Uh, they didn't get paid. Or they won't pay you. Let me rephrase that. Across the board. Now this is a bet on a horse to win, place, and show. Should the horse win, the player will collect three ways. First, second, and third place payoffs. But if the horse is second, he'll only collect on place and show payoffs. And if he shows, he will only collect on a show payoff. Bankroll. This is what uh, the total amount of money that you intend to spend or to bet with. Um, everybody wants more of it and that's for sure break even this is when you've had a day at the track or at home um, and you started off with a bankroll and you lost nor gained any more than you started off with by the end of the day so if you started off with a hundred dollar bankroll and then at the end of the day after wagering and payouts you still had a hundred dollars no more no less you break even Real simple and straightforward. I'm sure everyone understands that. Backing up a bet. Let's say, for instance, that you wanted to bet the seven horse to win. Uh, so you'd go and you'd put a $2 win bet on the seven horse. But to back him up, you would also put a $2 place bet on the seven horse. That way you've got a $2 win bet, $2 place bet. That's called backing up a bet. Box cars. Now with box cars, it's just real simple. It's a four-digit payout. Uh, like in the example here, $25.40 means you won box cars on your horse. Boxing a bet. Now, boxing bet has absolutely nothing to do with boxing, even though my little horse there has got the gloves on. But let's say you wanted to place a $2 exact bet and you wanted it boxed. What that means is that you're betting, we'll say, for instance, the 7 and the 8 horse both ways. So the 7 could win it, the 8 could place, or the 8 could win it, and the 7 could place. That's called boxing your bet. Now, that works also for trifectas and such which we'll get into the exotic wagering here shortly. Chalk. Now chalk is the favorite at less than even money. Um, a lot of people prefer to bet the chalk, but it's not always the, uh, the best way to make a game. Morning line. The morning line is going to be the... Um, the odds on the horse uh, at that morning. Um, now these odds will change once the, the people start betting and whatnot. But to give you a basis of where they stand, the morning line's there kind of as a representation of their odds or predicted odds for the day. Overlay. An overlay is a horse going off at a higher price than he appears to warrant based on his past performances. I 
on the nose. That's real simple. Betting a horse to win. You're betting him on the nose. Um, some of the old timers call it a, a straight bet. Bridge jumper. Although you might think that's what you want to do when you've lost all your money. A bridge jumper is actually someone who makes large show bets on short price favorites. It's kind of a, a safe play. Uh, again, not not one of my favorite ways, but, you know, some people do it. Wheel. If you're going to wheel a horse, uh, for instance, to bet one horse in one race with all the horses in the next race in the Daily Double, um, which we'll get to the Daily Double here in a minute, basically what that means is, let's say the favorite in the first race is the seven horse. And you're not real sure who's going to run first in the second race. If you're betting a daily double, you might want to wheel the seven horse in the first race with all of the horses in the second race. And that's how you would wheel a bet. And it can also go the other way. If you wanted to wheel all the horses in the first race and bet the seven horse or whatever horse that you choose in the second race, that would be wheeling a bet. Okay, let's get a little bit into the exotic wagering. One well, of the first ones you've come across is the exacta. Uh, this is a bet that you'd place um, to determine the first and the second place horse in a race. Um, and it would be in the order that you called it. In other words, if using the example of the seven and the eight horse, um, if you were to bet an exacta, for the seven to win it and the eight to a place, then that would be an exact bet. If it come in opposite of that, you wouldn't win it. It has to be, as you call it, seven horse first place, eight horse second place. Similar to that is the Quinella. It's a different type of bet where you can go ahead and determine who's going to be the first horse and the second horse. Uh, winners in the race uh, it doesn't matter so th what order they finish in so if you again use an example of the seven and the eight uh, if the seven ran first and the eight ran second you would win on your quinella bet if the eight ran first and the seven ran second you'd win on the quinella bet trifecta same principle as the um, exact a bet except this time you're going to determine who's going to win place and show for this race so using our seven eight and we'll throw in the nine if you bet a trifecta bet for the seven to win it the eight to uh, place and the nine to show uh, and they ran that way you would win and then you take from the trifecta you can take it a step further and do the superfecta. Same principle, they must be in the order that you bet them. First, second, third, but now we're adding a fourth horse. A couple of other ones that I just wanted to mention were the pick six and uh, the daily double. Now we, we talked about the daily double a while ago. Usually it's the first two races of the day at a track. Um, but they do have late daily doubles, and uh, so don't let that be a standard. But uh, it's basically just two races uh, where you pick the winners of each race. Uh, the pick six, similar principle, there would be six races, and you would pick the winners of the six races. Now, they have others like pick four and whatnot. Same principle. You're just deciding who's going to win each race that they select. Okay, now that we've talked a little bit about the wagering, let's move on to the players of any given race. Uh, these are real simple. Uh, some of this I, I sh don't even have to tell you, but to be on the safe side, uh, the owner, quite simply, is going to be the owner of the horse. 
Uh, the trainer, again, real simple, is the person who is responsible for training the horse. The jockey, of course, is the little guy that rides it. The apprentice is a jockey that has not ridden a full year past his 35th winter. Now, what makes these guys special is that they're given a 5 or 10 pound weight allowance, uh, which that doesn't uh, count in stakes races, but any other race, uh, it could be beneficial. The bug boy. Quite simply, the bug boy is the apprentice. It's just another term for it. He's a jockey that has not ridden a full year past his 35th winter. He's an apprentice jockey. He gets that uh, special weight allowance. Okay, we have the clocker. He's the one who times workouts and races. Real simple. He's the guy holding the stopwatch. The caller is the person who actually calls the race. So whenever you hear the announcement, you know, he's coming into the back stretch, blah, 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 whatever. That guy is the caller. And then the handicapper is anyone who makes selections based on past performances or any number of variables to determine the outcome of a race. Quite simply, you are going to be a handicapper. Now let's talk a little bit about the horses. We've got our filly, who is the female horse, age four or younger. We have the gelding, which is my little guy here to the left. Um, he's the castrated male horse. We have a maiden, who is a horse that has never won a race. And to break maiden is a horse or jockey winning the first race of their career. So if you hear someone say, that horse just broke maiden, they just won their maiden race. They, they won their first race. Okay, bad actor. This is a fractious or troublesome horse. The closer is a horse who runs better in the latter part of the race, coming from behind and off the pace. And a mutter is a horse who races well on muddy tracks. Now let's take a look at the workouts and past performances and things that relate to that. <clears throat> One thing that um, a lot of people tend to get mixed up are the programs and the past performances. The programs are the actual lineup for a day of racing with only the basic information. As you can see in the example here, we've got the name of the horse. It'll tell you, and of course you won't be able to read that because it's really, really small in the picture, but like the, uh, the trainer, the owner, the jockey. Uh, what number they are, that sort of thing. That's what a program is. Now, past performance will have much more information than that, and that's what you need for the oldest system on the planet uh, to get your first call and second call, which if you haven't looked at that yet, you will, and you'll, you'll know what I'm saying there. But a past performance will have, uh, it, quite simply, the horse's past performances, how he's done in other races. It will also have, like, the workouts, and other information you can use to handicap. Also eligible uh, just refers to a horse that is officially entered but is not allowed to uh, start unless the field is reduced by a scratch. Uh, so what's a scratch you might ask? Well that's a horse that's been withdrawn from a race. A bullet that refers to a workout time, and it's the best distance or the best time for the distance on the work tab for a given day at a track, usually indicated by a black dot in the workout section of a past performance. You'll see these little black dots at the bottom of the uh, the horse's uh, past performances where it's listing his workout times, and occasionally you'll see a dot in there. Well, that's just saying for that day they were the fastest horse for that workout. Let's see. Blowout. Blowout's a short final workout, usually a day or two before a race, designed to sharpen a horse's speed. Now we're going to get a little bit into the terms about how the horse was ridden. Uh, easily is running or winning a race without being pressed by a rider or opposition. So if a horse uh, won easily, then he had no competition and he wasn't really even worked hard and still won the race. Evenly 
means that they're neither gaining nor losing position or distance during a race. Now evenly doesn't just refer to a first place horse, this can refer to the fifth place horse. You know, if they stayed fifth throughout evenly, that's what that means. Handily, working or racing with moderate effort, but more effort than breezing. So, and before we get to breezing, uh, let's talk about driving. Driving is a strong urging by a rider. Um, as you can see in the past, this I took a little clip of the uh, past performance here, and uh, this particular horse on his second race, you know, he finished the race driving. Uh, he was being strongly urged by his rider. And another thing that you'll hear about often is blinkers, and real simply, that's what's on the horse there, blinkers. Now. Breezing. That's working a horse at a moderate speed, less effort than handily, which we had talked about earlier. Uh, hand ride is urging a horse with the hands and not using the whip. So if a jockey's riding, or he, he had a hand ride on a horse, uh, he's urging him, he's he's wanting him to go, but he's not. He he didn't break out the whip which uh, hand ride is pretty good. Uh, wire to wire, horse leading from start to finish. I'm sure you've heard the phrase before. Checked. This is a horse that's pulled up by his jockey for an instance because he is cut off or in tight quarters. You know, they'll, they'll get bunched up pretty good sometimes. And um, if a jockey has to check his horse, just to avoid a bump or an accident, he will pull up on him for a split second, just enough time to let them pass by, and then he has to work around from there. Ridden out. This is a vigorous hand ride without whipping. So he's really, really giving him the giddy up, but again, not whipping him. Uh, it's good to see horses that have been ridden out. checked we already talked about checked um, but a breather is restraining or easing off on a horse for a short distance in a race to permit him to conserve or renew his strength you're giving him a breather and to bobble this is at the start of the race uh, it's a bad step away from the starting gate usually caused by the track breaking away from under a horse's hoof and causing him to duck his head or nearly go to his knees um, blind switch again we're talking about uh, horses being bunched together. Um, the blind switch is being caught in a pocket or such a position behind or between horses that a free course cannot be pursued. He's stuck. All out. When a horse extends himself to the utmost, he's been ridden all out. Stalking the pace. A horse that is laying three to five lengths off the leader so you know the leader setting the pace he's about three to five lengths behind him he's stalking him that's stalking the pace and bearing in or out this is deviating from a straight course this may be due to weariness infirmity punishment by rider or rider's inability to control the mount but whatever the reason if he bears in or he bears out he's he's moving off his straight course and the blanket finish. This is a term referring to horses finishing a race so closely together a blanket could have covered. Okay guys, now that we've uh, talked about all the factors going into the race, uh, let's talk about the race itself. Uh, first thing you should know about is a claiming race. Um, this is a, a race where a horse has been entered and can be claimed by someone else for a set price. Um, in the example I give here, uh, you'll see the CLM uh, 3500. Well, that's a claiming race of $3,500. Any horse can be claimed for $3,500. A sprint race is a race distance of less than a mile. So if uh, we're saying a 
horses going, you know, six furlongs today, that's a sprint. Whereas a rout would be anything of a mile or longer. An allowance race is a race other than claiming for which the racing secretary drafts certain conditions to determine weights. And a condition race is an event with conditions limiting, limiting it to a certain class of horse, such as fillies, three-year-olds, non-winners of two races other than mating or claiming, etc. Ah, the baby race. No, it's not actually a race of babies, it's, but it is a race of two-year-old horses that are practically babies. Real simple. Post. It's the starting point or position in the starting gate. You'll hear them say oftentimes uh, at the beginning of the race, the horses have reached the post. Backstretch. The straight area of the track in between the turns, also the stable area. And stretch is a final straight portion of the racetrack to the finish. An inquiry is reviewing the race to check for a possible infraction of the rules. If a horse gets bumped or whatnot, they might call for an inquiry. The call. This is the running position of horses in a race at various points. Um, if you've already looked at the oldest system on the planet, you know what the first call, second call is. And if you haven't, then you soon will. Uh, it's well, it well explained within the book. The wire is the finish line of a race, real simple. Dead heat is two or more horses finishing in an exact tie at the wire. And a photo finish is an actual photo at the wire to see who won the race. Well, I hope this helped. This is just a basic of some of the uh, lingo and jargon used for horse racing. And uh, it'll get you a good start. And the more you're around it, the more you'll hear different things and you'll pick up on it real easy.